In Colossians 1.6, all things were made by him and for him. And in Hebrews 1.2, all things are now his inheritance. Do you see how those two texts go together? There's a beautiful complement between those two texts. And it speaks to this mysterious and marvelous union of God and man in Jesus Christ. Friends, all things belong now to the man, the God-man Jesus. And that's a staggering thing that elevates the human nature to a place it's never been. That the human nature now has possession of all things. For the first time we can say in all of history that a man sits on the throne of heaven and has dominion. Something Adam was meant to do in the garden but failed at to have dominion over the earth. But now for the first time from heaven, a man rules. And how wonderful a thought that is for you who love him. That's a grand thought to those who are Christian people. Because the man who loves you, who has all things, who shares in your nature, who knows your temptations and trials, who says that you are his and you are, uh, and, and you are his, united to Jesus by faith, says that he has in his possession all things. And consider what all means. Sometimes we quibble over in other texts what all means. There is no quibbling over what all means here, friends. All things means all things. Churches, nations, viruses like COVID-19, angels, the devil, powers, principalities, you and me and everything else has been entrusted to Jesus. Everything is his. It's staggering to think of the vast scope of all the things that are committed to Jesus. And now you understand, when you consider that all things are given to him, why he can say that the Son of Man is even Lord of the Sabbath. What man, what Son of Man dare say that? Yet this man could say it, showing you that the scope of all things means all things. Friends, when you see... Anything in this world amiss, whatever it is, friends, that thing is under Christ's authority. It is under Christ's dominion. <laughs> Maybe for our time. Democrats, they're under Christ's authority. Republicans are under Christ's dominion and authority. Uh, this United States federal government is under Christ's authority. The United Nations is under Christ's dominion and authority. They may not recognize it. But just as he is Lord of the Sabbath, he is Lord of all these things. And all of them owe their allegiance not just to God, not just to God as God, but to Jesus Christ as God-man, the Savior of his church. And I don't mean to exclude the church. I talked about governments. The church is under the authority of Jesus Christ, the God-man. Because he is the only mediator between God's elect and God. And all, all, we're going to get to that, owe the mediator Jesus' allegiance. But pastorally, friends, it is a sweet thought to think that our Savior, my Savior, has all things under his control. Every bit of it is under his control. And that tells you that you and me have no cause to be anxious. Not at all. And isn't that the, the, the point that the apostle makes when he says that if God would give his own son, how will he not give you all things? And now you see that sitting on heaven's throne is the very person who suffered for me, who died for me, and has all power in heaven and on earth. And how can I go through a single day being anxious? But I know if he has taken care of my salvation, he'll take care of all things. And so... Brother and sister, don't be anxious. Don't worry about providences. They're all under God's control in Christ, who has saved you. And if you believe he has saved you, how will you not believe he'll take care of all things? All is under Jesus' dominion. All things are committed to your Savior as the mediator. Greatly stirred, I sing a noble theme. My tongue's a skillful writer's pen to speak.